1 Corinthians chapter number 2, verse 5, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, listen to this closely, but in the power of God. Howbeit we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of the world, nor of the princes of this world that come to naught. Now think about that. The wisdom of this world are the princes that come, the wisdom, uh, the princes of this world that come to naught. They come to nothing. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom, which God ordained before the world unto our glory. So he's talking about the wisdom, the prophetic voices, the, that the anointing that God sends, that he speaks through his prophets and he does it with wisdom man cannot understand, and he does it from things started from the foundation of the world. It didn't just come up because this came up. It was in motion long before it came up. Are you with me? All right. Verse 8, I, I love this. This is where I actually take my text from, but it says, Which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, I hath not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by the Spirit, for the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. I want to read verse 8 again, which none of the princes of this world knew. He just talked about how their wisdom didn't, you, you, did, you don't want to live by their wisdom. You, don't, you just don't want to control your life by their wisdom. Are you with me? You need to do it by the wisdom of God, and he will reveal these things. And it says, which none of the princes of this world knew. The, the, several translations say none of the rulers of this world, and it means literally all rulers. It means spiritual, physical, natural, all the, of this world Amen. New. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. I just titled my message this morning, The Crucifixion Brief. No matter, what, no matter what power has risen, no matter how many rulers there's been, it doesn't matter the most powerful military mites on the planet, every single one of them have fallen. Are you listening? All of them. It doesn't matter. Everyone that's ever, 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 listen, you, you just have to know that no matter what is constructed, no matter what is devised behind closed doors, no matter how devious it is, no matter how bad it is, no matter how evil it is, every bit of it is going to come to naught because God has a plan, and that plan will not be changed. It will not be mutated. It will not change or convert. It will continue to always be the perfect will of God. Now, hang with me. A lot of stuff going on, and I watch these. I watch people, and I've said something about it the last couple of weeks. But listen, I just want to say this: you got to be really plain about this. I believe that there are nefarious people doing bad things who've had bad motives to do bad things. I believe all of that. But listen to me: if we lose our voice, then we will not be able to do what God plans for us to do through this, in this age or this dispensation. And by losing our voice, I mean this. Instead of coming off like God-filled, Holy Ghost-filled prophets, a lot of us sound like the, prof the, the, the prophetic ramblings of a drug-induced psychosis. Oh, somebody shout now. It's amazing to me to read the stuff people will actually put online. I'm thinking, did you, you, you said that. It, it was bad enough you thought it. You said it. And you put it in words and said it. Are you listening to me? Men will always have their other motives. Okay? Men will always have their other motives, but God has the ultimate plan. Because when we start to hold it, now listen to me. I, Lord, I got to get on past this point, but, but I got to make it because God told me to make it, so I'm going to make it. Listen to me. Be careful about getting so wrapped up in conspiracy stuff because when you say things you cannot prove, you better listen. When it, when it comes like this, this, this I'm, I, I'm watching um, people that just cling on to all these crazy things and they keep, 
saying things are real and they're real and they're real, but they don't come to pass and nobody can prove them, but they're out there, but you can't prove them because everybody in the world's so smart they can keep it all hidden. Well, listen, you're giving man too much credit. Man ain't that smart. So, amen. Well, y'all a little dead this morning, but you're still worth it, I guess. What? Maybe my cheering section left. I don't know. There's a bunch of holes right over there. Maybe that was where they were supposed to be. I don't know. We give the devil way too much credit. We act like he's an absolute genius. Are you listening? The devil's not a genius. This says, had the rulers of the world known what was going on, they would have never crucified Christ. That means the rulers all had, listen, they all had their motives. The devil had his motive. He'd like, I'm killing God. I'm going to kill God. Now, how smart do you have to be to think you're going to kill God? Oh, but this is that maniacal genius that you just keep giving credit for everything going wrong in your life. Every time you got a flat tire, you blame him for it. Well, I'm telling you something. He ain't got nothing to do with your tire. He ain't messing around with you. Are you listening to me? You're just not that high up on the list when it comes to the car you're driving. Are you with me? It's not until you step out of your house anointed in the power of God and decide that you're going to be a witness for Jesus Christ, that you're going to be a Holy Ghost-filled prophetic voice that will speak the truth in love, that's when you get on the hit list. Well, I was going down to the Dollar General the other day, going to buy some bleach, and the devil gave me a flat tire. Stop it. It's what makes everybody that are not Christians say, I don't want to be a Christian. Are you listening? But we give him credit for all kinds of stuff he's not even capable of doing. He's not omniscient, which means he doesn't know everything. He's not omnipresent, which means he's not everywhere at the same time. And he's certainly not all-powerful. Are you listening? He's not omnipotent. He's all, there's only one that's all-powerful. Amen. And his name is Jesus Christ. There is only one that is all. My God, I think I'm preaching better than you're shouting this morning. I need you to understand, church that until we give credit where credit is due, we're going to continue to lose these battles. My God is on the throne. My God has the plan. My God is all-powerful. My God is all-knowing. And it's him and him alone. I just don't know what I'm going to do. The devil's been after me all week. The devil, here, let me just, let me help you. The devil doesn't like you. Do you love Jesus? The devil don't like you. I'm going to give you another revelation. For you guys in here that don't serve God and you don't love Jesus, you may think he's your best friend, but he don't like you either. And just as soon as he gets a chance, he's going to drop you like a hot potato right in the middle of some mess you can't get yourself out of. Are you listening? Now, this is literally a briefing to explain to you how God works in the world. And it uses for an example the greatest thing that ever happened in Christendom. He says this, man had his motives, the, the princes, the rulers of this world had their motives, but all their motives come to naught because they would have never crucified. In other words, now listen, it took an evil and a depraved mind to crucify Jesus. Are you listening? That was brutality beyond brutality. What he went through on that day was, if you ever watched The Passion of the Christ, some have said that's probably the closest thing to what Jesus actually endured that, that anybody's ever depicted. But I'm telling you something, it took an evil and a depraved mind to do that to any human being. So we understand that there are really evil people in the world. But listen to me, at simultaneously, while the devil was doing his best, God was doing his best. Are you listening? 
isn't it? Simultaneously, while the devil was being evil, God was allowing it to happen because he knew the end result wasn't going to be that the devil was going to kill God. The end result was going to be that the first fruits of the resurrection was about to come. Honey, the resurrection, listen, the crucifixion is the greatest pinnacle of Christianity, and the devil thought he was winning all day long. Hallelujah. He thought he was winning all weekend long, but all along God said, I'm about to raise him up, and I'm going to save every man, woman, and child that ever comes to me. Come unto me, all you who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Listen to what I'm telling you. God has the plan, and it hasn't changed. This is a briefing about, 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 about how the affairs of men operate. And men always have their motive. Listen, the Bible, the Gospels are full. We know why they crucified Christ. We know why the Sadducees did it. We know why the Pharisees did it. We know why Pilate. We know why Herod. We know why they all did what they did. The Bible tells you why they did, and they all had different motives. Some just didn't want to stir the pot. Now, listen to me. We, and this is what I get with the, the, the thing, with the government thing, with everything that's going on. Now, listen, I'm going to, at the end of this, I'm going to pray, uh, play for you a little uh, six-minute prophecy by Tracy Cook. Many of you have already heard it. It was done on January 15th, 2020. So it was long before all this mess happened with coronavirus. Okay? If you're going to be a prophetic voice in my life, you need to prophesy it before it happens. Amen. And so it's supposed to work. Amen. I mean, there's lots of them on there now prophesying, but I just, I want to know. I want to know. Well, just help me, Lord. I've told people a lot. I know a lot of people in my life, a lot of them who claim to be prophets, even some that put prophet before their first name. I only know about three. I'm being honest. Especially in the world I live in, there's a lot of prophets. I mean, I go to preaching some pastor's conferences, depending on where, and it's prophet this and prophet this that and prophet this and prophet this that and whatever, and I'm like, you're awesome. God bless you. I mean, I ain't speaking against it. That ain't my deal. But I'm telling you, when it comes to people who can hear the voice of God and tell you something that ain't happened yet but's going to happen and it come true, I don't, I'm not talking about psychic prophets. You, you, watch how they work. They watch. They watch the watch your face. See if your expression change. Oh, I hit on something. Let's go down that road. I don't like it. It's manipulation. I don't like it. It's scary. I'm not talking about psychic prophets. You know, tomorrow you're going to see a red car when you go to town. Oh, she's a genius. I gave her another 150 bucks so she could do my reading tomorrow. This stupidity gone to seed. But I mean real prophetic voices who will speak things about the plan of God and them come to pass. Those are few and far between. Are you listening? Now, this instruction book manual uses, as he's instructing, about the wisdom of men and the wisdom of God and the plan of men and the plan of God, it uses the resurrection, I believe, because, number one, it's the foremost thing that happened in Christianity, but not just that, in the history of the world. The crucifixion of Christ is the most important thing that ever happened to humankind. Okay? It's just that simple. So, in the process of briefing you, of telling you how things are going to work, he uses this as the example of, I knew what I was doing. They didn't know what I was doing. Don't be worried about what you think they're doing because I am going to have my way. Are you listening? 
Now, here's what I think. Now, in the, in the, I'm going to play you about six minutes here at the last, and, and uh, it's off YouTube, so we're allowed to play it and allowed to film it, whatever. But there is also, and, and, and listen, I'm not, I, don't, I don't have any Tracy Cook books. I don't have any, I don't, I'm not like a, I, I've never sent him any money or anything like that, so I'm not advocating for any one person. I'm, I am of the belief that no human is perfect, so if you're not perfect, you can't be perfect. And I've heard people say, well, if he's a real prophet, he ever gets one thing wrong, he'll, you know, it's not a real prophet. I, I don't know how that's possible if you're a human. I just don't. And I can show you, I believe, I can show you in the Word of God where, even, where we know prophets got some stuff wrong. Okay? So it's possible. However, um, you can tell the difference who's, between somebody that's guessing a bunch of stuff and hits it every now and then. <laughs> And a human being that doesn't have all the details. For we know in part, therefore we prophesy in part. Amen? When that which is perfect has come, that which is done in part shall be done away. Well, right now, that which is perfect hasn't come. Amen? Jesus ain't here. And we're not grown up completely in the stature of Jesus Christ. So right now, we see through, behold, you see through a glass dimly. All right? So you have limited vision. And you speak as the Spirit gives you utterance, as the Spirit of God speaks to you as a prophetic voice. But if you'll read the old, even the Old Testament prophets that even prophesied about Jesus, it'll go along that there'll be a verse or two about Jesus, and then boom, they'll jump to something else. It'd just be like, where, where, where'd that come from? What's he talking about now? I mean, he was coming in, he's riding on a donkey, he was lowly and meek and mild, and boom, there's the city. <laughs> what city? They're all over the place. Because they see through a glass dimly. But the message will get through, and it will be clear enough for you to understand it if it's God. Amen? God is not the author of confusion. I've had people speak things over to me, and I thought, I don't know where that came from. Don't sound like nothing in my life. Don't have nothing to do with me. And for the rest of my life, it still ain't come to pass. I know... God didn't do that. I have had prophetic voices speak over me that have nailed, I mean literally nailed my life. That's power. That's what God does. Amen? The Bible tells us to try them, to test them. Okay? So I'm not being an advocate for a certain voice. I'm just telling you there is this prophecy that he brought forth, and this prophecy came to pass. Okay? Now, he also says that he had, a, he had a dream or a vision or whatever, and God gave him this dream or vision, and, show, and he saw the virus. We call the coronavirus, whatever you want to call it, China virus. Believe it or not, that Nazi Pelosi the other day called it the Trump virus. They ought to just take her out back to the back of the woodshed somewhere. I don't... I don't care what political persuasion you are of. I'm going to tell you something. I was not a fan of Barack Obama. I never was. But I would be, I, it would infuriate me if I, while he was my president, somebody said that about him. Because I know better. I know where it came from. That's not just dirty politics. That is as low as anything on earth, in my opinion. It's awful. You can leave that in if you want to, son. Amen. Now, you hear me. We, his declaration, or what he said the vision was, was that he saw them making the virus in a laboratory in Wuhan. He also says he knows why the, what the motive was. God showed him what the motive was, and that the motive was to make sure Trump didn't win at all cost. Now, you listen to me. I have no idea to, how to know, unless God would tell it to me, the evil that's in a, the hearts of men, or how their minds work, or whatever. I have no way of knowing that. I can tell you that on the surface, it certainly would make sense. This is the first president in a long time that's battled against China. 
threw tariffs on them, told them you're not going to keep stealing, robbing our intellectual property and taking all of our money. You're not going to do that. So it makes sense that they'd want him out. Amen? Makes sense. Now, I don't know about that part of the vision or whatever. It, it's not in this, the prophecy that, I, that I'm going to play for you. But the prophecy that I'm going to play for you, he begins by talking about God is going to change the landscape of the church. And it's going to happen in the next four months. It's pretty specific. This is January 15th. Are you listening? That put that in the middle of May. That the middle of May we were in a national shutdown to slow the spread. Amen? And that's right at the time when we closed our doors for a little while. Now, we continued to preach, but we, we didn't have church in the house. Now, listen to me. It's pretty amazing. But here's what I think, and I'm going to hurry because i got to get on because I get to the end of this, but here's what I think. I didn't like it, and I still don't. I don't like the way we have to do church. I don't like the fact that there are people who would come and worship with us who are afraid to come now or come in. I don't like that, okay? I do think a lot of it's constructed by man. I think most of the fear is fomented by man. I believe that, all right? I really do. But that's not to say that, there are, you know, that there's no such thing as a coronavirus. That's not true. There is, okay? I know people personally who have had it, all right? I know people personally who have gotten really sick with it. Okay, so I know that there's a virus. I just think it's, we it's been weaponized, okay, to try to do a lot of things, to try to, and I believe that the nefarious side of things is to try to shut down churches. Amen? It's pretty obvious to me when you'll let liquor stores and abortion clinics stay open, but you want all the churches to shut. I mean, it's pretty obvious. Now, that's not happening in, quote, quote, conservative quarters, places that are run by conservatives, but it's happening a lot in liberal places. Amen? Because they don't put a premium on, on church worship. They just don't. They think, listen, that's their mindset. They think you're a fool for believing in God. All right? I don't care what kind of lip service they give to whatever. I mean, you can tell when somebody stands up and says, my favorite book in the Bible is Ecclesiasticus. That was also Nazi Pelosi if you're just putting down quotes. You know they don't know what they're talking about. They're just giving lip service. They're trying to fool people. Okay? Now listen to me. So I believe that the, that the enemy full well intends to shake the church. But I also know that God fully intended to shake the church. Are you listening? That prophecy he gave, he said, everything that will be, can be shaken will be shaken. That's what it said, January 15th. Everything that can be shaken. I'm going to change the landscape of the church. Everything that can be shaken will be shaken. Now, I'm going to tell you something. And I, again, I'm not, this, please understand this. Please understand that I'm not talking about an individual person that makes a decision about them or their family or their own personal whatever. I'm not talking about that. But I can tell you this. I've never seen so many Christians afraid and all of a sudden, some of the very things we preached, we're afraid to live. Are you listening? Now, I thank God. It doesn't take a genius to know what's happened in the last 15 years out of pulpits. We've had mainline denominations that have decided to try to twist and manipulate Scripture to somehow saying homosexual Marriage is okay. Listen to me. I'm not a bigot. I don't hate homosexuals. In fact, there's a couple in my life that I'm trying to win to the Lord. I love. I think they're pretty awesome people. They just need to get their stuff straight. Are you with me? So I don't have. I don't. I, I, I got anything. But I, for as long as God gives me breath, I'm going to tell you what the Bible says, and God says it's an abomination. 
okay? You hear me and hear me plainly. I don't care who tries to manipulate it, twist it, change it, do something different with it. I'm telling you, and here's why. It's not even about sexual perversion, which is what everybody thinks it's about. It's even what the church thinks it's about. It's not about that. It's about God created. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. On the sixth day, he created man. The way he created man is he went to the dirt or the, or the, or the dust of the earth. He formed man. He didn't just blow up something in the sky and walk off and it all, and someday there was an amoeba in the slime and it crawled out and said, one day I'm just going to grow me some legs and I'm tired of growing. I'm tired of not talking to people, so now I'm going to learn how to talk. It didn't do all that nonsense. God created Adam and he raised him up out of the earth and he breathed into his nostrils and he gave him life. That's how Adam became a living, speaking being. When he did that, the Bible says Adam was both male and female in one creation. Are you listening? One creature, the first man was male and female. Are you with me? He was male and female. He could reproduce in and of himself. He didn't need anybody to help him because everything that God sanctions can multiply. Are you listening to me? If it can't multiply, it is not God. It's that simple. So he raised him up, made him male and female. Read Genesis. It says male and female. Made he him. So he made him male and female. He then set him down, let all the animals come in front of him. Every single animal walked by. Every single animal was found not to be a suitable made for Adam and God then said it's not good for this man to be all by himself. It's not good for man to be alone. So he put him to sleep. He removed. Listen, you've heard growing up in Sunday school, God took a rib out of Adam. God didn't take a rib out of Adam. The Hebrew says God took the other side of Adam. Literally, it was half male, half female. God took the other side of Adam and removed the female and made Eve. So now Eve and Adam are male and female. Are you with me? That's why God says that when a man gets married to a woman, they too become one. Why do they become one? Because they were one in the beginning. It is the, it is the sanctioning of the original creation. Honey, it ain't about perversion. It ain't about sex. It's about what God intended from the beginning. You can't be the whole of creation. You can't reinstate the original creation without a male and a female. Two males can't do it. Two females can't do it. A man and a donkey can't do it. Homosexuality is wrong for the same reason bestiality is wrong. God already went down that road and no suitable mate was found for him. Are you listening to me? Now, you've had, that's just one. You, you, you've, you've got mainline denominations not just trying, not, not just trying, I mean, ordaining people. Saying, you preach this gospel. Are you listening? Not only have they been doing that, now you've got them standing up for abortion. Oh, my goodness. The wholesale slaughter of an unborn nation. And you are going to say it's okay. Are you listening to me? Oh, it's kind of rough. I get it. But it's true. And if you want to hear truth, then are you listening? So I think God got sick of the nonsense being spewed from the pulpits of America. That's what I believe. I can't prove that. I just, I just believe it. Okay? And I think God said, I'm going to shake everything that can be shaken, and I'm going to shake people loose that don't have the faith they claim to have, or I'm going to make them wise up and get on their face before me, and they're going to achieve or accomplish the faith they've been claiming they had all along. <laughs> 